What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Matthew McConaughey. Let's get straight into it. Well, let me, uh, I want to applaud you for being so outspoken against violence and gun violence in particular, mm. in particular. Um, and you're Texan and, and you spoke so passionately at the White House last year in the wake of that shooting at Raba Elementary in your hometown of, of That's of why Ubalde. we're wearing these little pens, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, your We're wife bothered. held up one mm -hmm. of the victims' yeah. green converse. Yeah. Uh, her name was Maite Rodriguez. Her yeah. mother, uh, Anna Rodriguez, sent these to us. Yeah. And to learn more about it, you can you can uh, check our website later. But I remember that you and um, your wife um, uh, were very involved there. And now you have launched the Green Lights Grant Initiative to help make schools safer. Yes. Please tell us about that. Thank you for the opportunity to. So what we found out after. After what happened at Robert Elementary and many other schools, the um, uh, first bill was passed in 30 years to help make schools safer. Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Billions of dollars to safe in schools. What I find out uh, months after the bill's been passed is that very few applications are going in from the school districts. And for those that are applying, very few are getting granted and awarded. Mm. So the money's still there. And we're like, wait, where's the gap? Well, we found out that these superintendents have to fill out these grants to the government. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are driving the school bus, and they're the PE teacher, and this grant process is 50 pages, and it's intimidating. Wow. And I don't know about y'all, but I have trouble making it through filling a custom card out without yeah, having to yeah, scratch yeah. stuff out. It is intimidating, so they don't have the expertise at the time. Um, the government wants these grants to be filed. They want to spend the money. It's use it or lose it money. And if we don't spend that money that the government has, by 2026, it could be reallocated. So with the Green Lights Grant Initiative, which you can go to greenlightsgrantinitiative.org to find out more about it, we're helping with the grant writing process. Oh. We've hired grant writers that are coming on to go to these schools, the most, the highest need schools, lowest capacity schools throughout the United States that need the safer schools the most. Which is what we need to do because our education system, especially in the South, is horrible. We're helping them write the grant. Oh. So they have the most, the, the most opportunity to get successful and get the grant. Wow, that's good. Well, you know, um, you're someone who really seems to appeal to both sides of the aisle. I don't think anyone thinks you're one way or another way. And in 2021, you considered a run for governor right. of the state I, of Texas. Dude, I definitely would have voted for Matthew McConaughey over Greg Abbott. That would have been lit. This before deciding to focus on your family. Yep. Do you think political office is in your future? Can you see that? If it's where I would deem myself to be most useful? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Right now, um, I want to be most useful as a father yeah, raising, old, yeah. you know, what's that, what they say about <laughs> kids, I read this quote the other day, or maybe I came up with it in a dream myself, but <laughs> you got 18 years to change the world if you're saying your kids are going to be gone by 18. Mm. I mean, what more important job yeah. or privilege could we have? I don't That's what I'm tell doing you right this, now. but they don't go at 18. <laughs> I hear this too. I hear this too. <laughs> That's true. 35 years you to change the world. You might have more time to change the world. All your life. <laughs> yeah, you, you, and, and as it turns out, they tend to want to change it with you. They don't fight you as hard Amen. when you're trying to change the world. They don't mind changing it with you. They'll think some of your ideas are odd right, right. because that's how kids are. But yeah. they generally want to be with you so that it's better for them and they make it better for the next group. It's crazy. Mine's still, with, I mean, you know, okay. I talk to mine every day. Right. <laughs> I mean, as you should, you should talk to your kids every day. Come on, Whoopi. Okay. There you go. Every day. <laughs> Phone's ringing. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, yeah, as far as office, uh, I would, I'm still, I will always measure what category I can be most useful. Let me go through Do you think you could get time. elected in Texas being anti-gun? Do I think I could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? One thing about if, if, if me in politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. To Don't give you a direct statement right there. He charged her up. Okay, get Joey Behar. I don't even know who this lady is. But but what is going to happen? Yeah, go back, go back, go back. You a direct statement right there is. Yeah. Do I think I could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? One thing about if, if, if me in politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay, to don't, give you don't a direct do it. statement don't right do there. It. But, but what is going to happen is Matthew's going to stick around because we got a big surprise for him coming yes. up next. Oh, oh. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, but, I have to tell you. See, this is what the problem is with these shows, man. Like, these shows are awful.
I, I absolutely cannot stand the view. All these other shows that just propagate like women talking around a round table and just gossiping and just talking about blah, 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 blah. like some of the things they're talking about were good as far as the initiatives they're doing with the green converse and all that stuff like help the kids and things like that. Great. But a lot of them just get on these shows and just babble. Just blah, 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 blah. they're not talking about anything. They're really not getting to the point of anything. And so as a guy, I would be very hesitant to jump on the view because you're jumping on a panel of like five women and then you like, can you imagine them like, like, especially Matt. Matthew McConaughey, a guy of his stature, a guy of his status, like they're just like breathing down your neck with all these questions. Like Joe Hey Behar, she could have, or, or whatever, Joy Behar, whatever her name is, she could have waited to, to ask that question. She didn't have to ask it on live TV in front of everybody, in front of God and everybody with, with Matthew McConaughey there. She could have asked like, Hey, I mean, I know you want to run for governor, governor, but like, what are your, what are your, what's your stance on being anti-gun? So I mean, I got to applaud her for asking the question at least, but at the same time, it's like Joy or whatever her name is, Joy Behar. I'm like, honey, why are you trying to start? Like, we're talking about good things here, but just leave it to a woman like that, an older lady who's probably alone. Like, I wonder if I wonder if Joy Behar has a husband, but leave it to one of these ladies to want to sit it, like, get up here and just like talk about ruining some things. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Like, you can't make this stuff up. Like, Joy, you should have just kept your mouth shut. It's really that simple. Keep your mouth shut. Keep it pushing. You don't have to worry about anything else, right? But the thing is, is Matthew McConaughey was like, I'm not going, I'm not finna play this game. I'm not finna play this game with you. Because if I got to play this game with you, then I'm, I'm meeting you at your level. And see, this is something we need to learn as men is women will test you. They will test you, bro. But the thing is, is when they test you, you have to know how to respond accordingly. So let's go back. Let's watch Matthew McConaughey. And how he responds to Joy Behar when she asked this question. Just so you can see. Acted in Texas being anti-gun. Uh, I would. I'm still. I will always measure. So she she's asking this question to antagonize him, right? Like she's definitely asking this question to antagonize. So let's just watch how this interaction goes down. Category I can be most useful. Let oh. me go through. Do you this think part he could get elected timeline. in Texas being anti-gun? So number one, she interrupts him. He's like in the middle of a sentence and she interrupts him, which is classic right there. Um, she's not listening to respond. She's, or she's, not, she's listening to respond, not listening to react. And this is something that women do. They just listen to respond. They're like, w what am I going to say? You, you guys have met women like this, right? You meet a woman. As soon as you start talking, she's like pretty much as soon as you stop talking, she's like already talking because she's just thinking about what she's going to say next. She's not actually synthesizing and analyzing the information and then listening to react. This is why I say if you ever meet somebody new and they're talking to you, hear them, take a second, pause and then reply. You don't have to reply immediately. I do this a lot just because I'm always thinking pretty quickly and I'm always thinking, how can I contribute to the conversation? So this is something I've had to really work on is be like, all right, I'm listening to someone. I'm going to listen to react, not listen to respond. Reacting means you're taking in, inf taking in the information and then you're you know, regurgitating something that is, is um, relevant to the conversation. So let's, let's go back. So I will always measure what category I can be most useful. Let oh. me go through this Do you this think you could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? Do I think I could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? So he does a good job of repeating the question almost to make sure, number one, that he's understanding her, which this is a good sales tactic. Um, and it also gives you time to think. When you repeat the question, do I think I could get re or elected in Texas even though I'm anti-gun? Depending on how you say that, uh, the other person could realize how crazy you think this question is he probably could have said it a little bit differently but he's being very he's got a high a upper echelon of decorum right now he's being very nice to her so let's go back one more time i could get elected in texas being anti-gun one thing about if, if me in politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that i'm not interested in playing okay. to don't, give you a direct statement don't right there. Yeah, he's he's pointing the fingers like so he's he's asserting his dominance there and she's just got her arms crossed so she kind of knows subconsciously that what she asks she's poking the bear and then when she gets that, look, he's looking at her directly and she's already like distancing herself. So let's go back one more time. Again, one thing about if, if, if me in politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in okay. playing. To don't, give you don't a direct statement don't right there. <sighs> she's like, okay, then don't do it. Don't do it. Like, well, you asked the question and that's the answer that you got. You should have respected that and be like, hey, I respect that. But she's like, don't do it. Don't do it. She's trying to like tell him what to do. Me in politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. To don't, give you don't a direct statement. And right. you, see, you see how her face, she was like all smiley. And then that smile fades away pretty quick. About if, if me in politics is 
to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. To don't, give you don't a direct do it. statement don't right do there. But, Joy, you shouldn't. And then she's laughing it off. But what is going to happen? And then Whoopi's trying to save the day. It's like, women will do this at any age. This is why I say women grow old. They don't grow up. This woman is a grown woman. Somebody's grandmother. And she's acting like this on national television, The View. But this is what I also think propagates a lot of these women to be boss babes and independent women is like, how many shows are like The View that are for men? Don't worry. I'll wait. There's none. There's, you, know what, you know what's for men out there? Sports talk, sports talk radio, sports talk shows where they talk about the plays from the other day. And, you know, it's things women always want to talk about women and, and, and do the drama and things like that. Even, so even these older women, that's what they want to do. They want to propagate this stuff. She was trying to prop that question up. So first of all, she interrupted him. He's in the middle of a sentence. She interrupts him. She asks a very controversial question. And then he repeats it saying, all right, I, I'm acknowledging that I'm hearing what you're saying and how ridiculous it is. But then he sets a boundary and says, I'm not going to feed into this, you know, this um, aggravated kind of aggressive question. And, and maybe maybe to him it was. It, it seems like the way he reacted, that's the way he, he received it. But this is what the problem is, is these women listen to respond. They don't listen to react. When if Joy Belhar, whatever her name is. If she would have listened and waited till he was done speaking and maybe asked him questions on uh, about maybe another topic when it was related to, to being guns or things like that. But like the conversation wasn't even there. So let's go back to the context of what they were talking about. And let's just see if it even pertains to a question like that. Every day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, and him and Whoopi went back and forth about kind of raising children and, and uh, the hierarchy of that and kind of what that experience is. So and then Matthew masterfully goodness gracious mcconaughey so he's so charismatic masterfully is able to wrap up this conversation even though he took in some stuff and learned as well every day <laughs> phone's ringing yeah, yeah. Right. So, something that he does a lot is he repeats what other people say so um what do they say imitation is the highest form of flattery so if you really want a girl to like you or to be accepted by someone you can say what they say or repeat what they say in the exact same way so watch him she says something like every day and he repeats it back this is like a, a big rapport building tactic here they'll think some of your ideas are odd right, right. because that's how kids are but yeah. they generally want to be with you so that it's better for them and they make it better for the next group. It's crazy. Mine still would. I mean, you know, I talk to mine every day. Right. <laughs> but see, with Whoopi, you don't know if this every day is a great thing or a bad thing. It's like every day. Like, like, like her kid hasn't been able to, like, finally let go, disconnect, stop being a kid and go be an adult. And so let's, let's listen to Matthew's reply, which is masterful. There you go. Every day. <laughs> Phone's ringing. Yeah. yeah. Right. It so, is. yeah, as far as office. Uh, and then Whoopi has nothing to say. Absolutely nothing to say. Stupid. Still just wants to be the center of attention. Like, if you don't have anything to say, just let the camera cut. And she's like, and she noticed she has nothing to say. So I will always measure what category I can be most useful. Let oh. me go through Do you this think part you could get time. elected in See, Texas? So they're talking about kids right here. They're talking about kids. He's not, and he's talking about where he's useful, right? This is where the conversation went. And she comes out of absolute less left field with this question. Like it has nothing pertaining to the topic of discussion, but she just feels like she has to butt in. Women do this all the time, no matter what age. We'll always measure what category I can be most useful. Let yeah. me go through the Do you think you could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? Do I think like, I can why get ask that? It was so out of pocket. And you can tell everybody else is a little uncomfortable. Elected in Texas being anti-gun. One thing about if, if, if me and politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. be playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. To don't, give you don't a direct do it. statement don't right do it. there. You see, but, and the crowd claps for him, which means they're actually agreeing with him and not her. But what is going to happen? Whoopi well, tries to save it. He's going to stick around because we got a big surprise for him coming yes. up next. Oh, oh. yeah. 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 But, uh, I have to tell you, everybody in this audience. So you know you're everybody's going home with a copy of the book. And so he wrote just because. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I was like, why do they have that book there? But yeah, this entire exchange. Don't mind changing it with you. They'll think some of your ideas are odd right, right. because that's how kids are. But yeah. they generally want to be with you so that it's better for them and they make it better for the next group. It's crazy. Mine still would. I mean, you know, I talk to mine every day. Right. <laughs> every day. Like, I, I'm still a little... 
like how to interpret that exactly. But th this level of like, you guys notice I'm like sitting here analyzing this like I'm a therapist or a psycho or a, a CIA guy, <laughs> which I'm not, by the way. Shocker, right? <laughs> I'm just a regular dude. But these are just things. These are social cues I've picked up on over the years of like watching people, interacting with people, being an extrovert. And like there's so many times that I would just go up to people and talk to them just to learn from who they are, see how they speak, see how they interact with me, watch their body language and things like that. And then when Matthew McConaughey actually charges up this lady, you can see he's no longer facing the crowd and looking. He he gives her to business and points at her multiple times. Um which is a sign of, hey, I'm setting a boundary. You were completely out of pocket. And the crowd probably got the a little applause button so like to get them out of that. But then Matthew, Mc I think Matthew McConaughey does a good job of disconnecting from it, right? Setting the boundary and being like, I'm done and not holding on to it and just moving on with the conversation. This is something that mature adults do very well where they can scold. Like if you're a good leader, you can scold one person. And then if the next person is doing well, you can congratulate them. And be, and be sincere about both. It's these lines that we have to be able to cross when we're talking to women um, and then talking to men also. So like there's like the ebook I have out right now, the four pillars, are, four pillars of personality. This book right here basically gives you the foundation to, you know, be irresistible to women, but also get respect from men. Because these four things that I have in the book, humor, charisma, confidence, and stoicism, like if you can have all those and have a good mix, like people will be gravitated towards you. Like you have almost a magnetic personality. And I just listened to a, an ebook. It was like, um, oh man, I can't remember the name. It's, I think it's by James Reed. It's like the thinking man or something like that. Bro, it's a 50 minute listen on Spotify. You got to go listen to it. Some of the best stuff, like some of the best quotes I've heard in a very long time. And I think it'll give you guys like some solace in the way that you feel and the way that you think. Like, I think you guys would really like the book, but going back to women testing you, right? These chicks, it, it, like I said, they grow old. They never grow up. They're going to test you. And so you have to know how to react. Good tactic. We learned from McConaughey. Repeat the question, but maybe be like, what would I do if this, that, the third? Hmm. Okay. Well, you know what I'm not going to do is feed into this game of yours. So you can do the same thing. If a girl asks you a question that, that's completely out of pocket, just ignore the question and keep it pushing. You don't have to feed into this question because you're not stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't have to feed into this, this conversation or this line of questioning that she's getting into. You can actually set the boundary and you can keep it pushing. But a lot of men would feed into it. And as soon as you start feeding into these questions that are testing you, these women see you as an equal or even worse, they see you as an inferior because they go, oh, I'm testing him. And therefore, he's not passing the test. Therefore, I'm going to keep it pushing. You always have to remain that moral high ground and you always have to be in the one in control. Calmness is power. So if you're not calm, cool, collected, and stoic, like these women are going to see that and they're going to see see it as weakness. It's like it's like blood in the water for a shark. They're going to, ah, they smell blood and they go for the throat kind of type situation. So you got to make sure that you're not falling, you're not falling prey to these lines of questioning, right? And if a girl asks you a question that's completely out of pocket, just ignore her. They're used to it. Ignore her. Act like you didn't hear, huh? She says it again and you're like, what are you even talking about? Like turn it around and then complete. Like, why would you ever even ask a question like this? So out of pocket. Like, let's let's keep it pushing. Like, I don't even, I don't want to talk about that. We're gonna we're gonna keep it moving. Like like make the, if it's a question you don't want to answer, try to make them sound stupid. If they sound stupid, they're not gonna want to keep going. And if they feel like they need to test your manhood, like cool, go test somebody else. You might have had the right idea, but you had the wrong one. I'm not the guy. Keep it pushing. But this stuff is gonna happen over and over again. And the reason why women test men is because women instinctually biology biologically they want to know that they have the best man for the job and the best man for the job the job is being a father being a being a leader they want to know they want to make sure that you are the best option or choice for them so they intrinsically and subconsciously test you they want to test you to make sure you pass the test. And a lot of times these questions, these women are just doing it to just try to get a rise out of you. And if they get a rise out of you, they're like, mm, he's emotional. They want you to be logical. Even if they say, no, I want you to be in your feelings. No, they want you to be logical. So answer these questions logically. Women are emotional. Men are logical. Yin and yang, right? Peanut butter, jelly. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we thrive off of each other's differences. And so know that when you're talking to a woman and you have nothing to worry about. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you guys so much for 27K subs. This is crazy, bro. I think we can hit 30K. I don't know if we can hit it by the end of the month. I really hope we can, but I really do appreciate you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.